Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, your libertarian car guy. And I thought I'd do uh, my uh, video rant about the 2019 Volkswagen Sport Wagon from the inside before uh, I go outside and show you some of the other stuff. Um, two things that I like about this car, just for openers, two anachronistic things. First of all, look, it still has a physical key. Now, I know everybody likes the... Uh, the gimmickry and gadgetry of the push button ignition but I'll tell you something it's a lot easier to get a physical key cut and it's a lot harder it's a lot harder to hurt a physical key this physical key will probably last for 20 years it'll probably last the lifetime of the car and if you do need to get another key it's just a simple matter of getting it cut um, it's not difficult to replace the keyless fobs keyless ignition electronic fobs however they're often very expensive to replace and if the battery goes out, you're stuck unless you have another one. And then, of course, you've got the additional complexity of the electronic push button itself, as opposed to the good old simple uh, key lock uh, that's been in cars for decades and decades and is really, really reliable. Now, people accuse me of being a Luddite, uh, being anti-technology, and maybe I am, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not really difficult to take a physical key out of your pocket put it in the ignition and turn it. I don't see that it is a tremendous huge time savings uh, to have a key fob and then just push a start button. You're talking about seconds worth of difference. But anyway, I'll leave that up to you. Um, that's just the first thing that I wanted to tell you about uh, the sport wagon. The second thing is, look, it still has a pull up emergency brake. Now, I use that word specifically, the emergency brake, rather than an electronic parking brake. A lot of new cars uh, have their parking brake activated electronically via a button that's somewhere on the console. And the upside to that is that it does free up the space on the console. As you can see here, this handle takes up a good, probably about a third, maybe a fourth or so of the available real estate. But here's my argument in favor of the pull-up handle. One, it's mechanical. So uh, it's probably less likely to uh, develop a problem. And if it does develop a problem, it's probably going to be easier to fix. Generally speaking, this handle is connected to a cable, and that cable, when you pull it, pulls back on the brake in the back, and uh, that, that's what gives you your, your braking effect. And also, here's the other thing. Uh, it is indeed an emergency brake. Let's say uh, you lose your hydraulic brakes, your main brakes. Well, you can stop the car by using this, and see how I can, I can modulate the pressure by pulling it up gradually. With an electronic brake, you can't really do that. It's a button. It's on or it's off. So let's say you use it to try to slow the car. It's going to lock up the brake, probably. And the other thing is that it's electronically dependent. So if the car develops an electronic fault, then you have not got any way to stop the car in the event uh, that the main braking system fails. OK, not likely to happen, but it could happen. Now, let's get to the meat of the thing. All right, as a lot of you know who have followed my rants, Volkswagen no longer offers diesel engines in any of its vehicles, and I think that that's absolutely tragic uh, for a variety of reasons, including the reason that those diesel engines, depending on the car, were capable of getting in excess of 50 miles per gallon on the highway, which was as good or better than uh, a lot of the hybrid cars that are on the market, and for less money and with less complexity. Well, Volkswagen's had to pull those out of the lineup, but like all car companies, it still has to deal with the government's fuel efficiency mandates. Uh, it got crucified over the emissions stuff, but uh, it still has to deal with the emissions stuff. So what to do? Well, for 2019, uh, they have decided to uh, put a smaller engine in the sport wagon as its new standard engine. It's a 1.4 liter turbo. It's basically the same engine. I think it actually is the identical engine that's used in the, uh, the 2019 Jetta. So it's standard now. The 1.8 engine that was formerly the standard and only engine available last year uh, now reverts to optional. Uh, there's some pros and there's some cons. Uh, among the pros, the 1.4 liter engine does get very good gas mileage. Um, at the time that I'm doing this review, which is mid-October, uh, no official stats were available for the sport wagon. However, the same engine in the Jetta gets 40 on the highway. So I would think that it's going to get about 40 here as well, which is really good. Frame of reference, um, a TDI-powered Jetta, uh, diesel TDI-powered Jetta, got 46 on the highway, highway, or at least that's what the EPA rated it for 
Um, now I've driven those cars and I know that they could do better than that. But anyway, we're talking about a not huge difference. So that's some pretty good news. The other thing is that this little engine actually produces almost as much torque uh, as the old diesel engine, uh, nearly 190 foot-pounds. Uh, the old one was 236. I guess it's, there's a gap, but it's not a huge gap. Uh, it's not quite as good as the diesel, but it's not, not awful either. Now, on the downside, um, Volkswagen is only going to sell this engine, at least initially, in the front-wheel drive configuration. If you want all-wheel drive, you have to go up to the 1.8-liter engine. And the flip side of that is kind of interesting. They used to offer the 1.8 liter engine with front wheel drive, which was good if you were a performance enthusiast because the car weighed a little bit less and you could get squirrely with the front wheels and all that good stuff. Uh, and of course, also, it cost less. Uh, for 2019, if you want the 1.8 engine, you've got to go with the four motion all wheel drive system and that kicks the price up a little bit. Now the reason for that is they want the 1.4 liter engine to be the volume engine for CAFE purposes. CAFE, Corporate Average Fuel Economy, those are the government's mandatory minimum fuel economy requirements that every car company's got to deal with uh, before they can sell cars to the public. So they're figuring that if they can sell, let's say, two-thirds of these cars uh, with the 1.4 liter engine and let's say it gets 40 on the highway and 31 or 2 in the city that's going to help with their cafe averages. Um, the 1.8 engine is less efficient and if they bump the price up by pairing it with all-wheel drive they figure fewer people will buy it. It's available for those who want it but fewer people will buy it and that'll be good for their overall cafe numbers. So you know that's a bittersweet kind of a thing. Uh, now here's a really good thing. Um, the standard 1.4 liter engine now comes with a 6 speed manual transmission. Last year the standard 1.8 came with a 5 speed. Uh, so you get an upgraded transmission. There's also a new 8 speed automatic for the 1.4 liter engine. Um, the 1.8 is available with a 6 speed manual or uh, the 6 speed automated manual. Uh, pretty much the same as last year. So um, you can have either engine with a manual transmission and that's pretty nice. Uh, it's also a nice contrast to small crossover SUVs of which there aren't very many that offer manual transmissions. Uh, one of them that does is the um, Subaru Crosstrek, but if you look at the mileage, uh, the mileage with that thing isn't very good. And here's the real kicker, and here's the real sell for the sport wagon, and I think probably the main reason that I really dig it. Um, it's a wagon, it's not a crossover, and it actually has more space for cargo and more versatile space than a lot of the compact crossover SUVs that are on the market, including the Volkswagen Tiguan, which I like. The Tiggy's a cool little vehicle, about the same overall footprint, but less cargo space. Uh, this thing has 66 or so cubic feet with the second row down and about 30 behind the second row. Let's have a look at that. And to give you some frame of reference, uh, the Subaru Crosstrek has 50, uh, 55 something, and the same goes for the Volkswagen Tiggy. And the Tiggy actually, uh, behind its second row, only has about 12 cubic feet of space, uh, which really isn't much at all for a crossover SUV. So this thing's amazingly versatile. Um, I had uh, one of these, I guess, about a year or so ago, uh, and I had to get some drywall, and I actually was able to haul home some 4x8 sheets uh, of drywall. I had to put them in at an angle, and of course some of it was hanging hanging out, but nonetheless I was able to use this compact car uh, to get home 4 by 8 sheets of drywall, which is pretty cool. And it's even more cool that it's not another crossover SUV, God help us all. Uh, no offense to crossovers, I know people like them, I know they're popular because they're so versatile and they've got all this room and blah blah blah, but everybody's got them and it's nice to find something that's different but does pretty much the same job and does it in a way that's more fun to drive, in my opinion. Um, and one of the reasons it's more fun to drive, you may have noticed, it sits lower, a lot lower than a crossover SUV. Um, it sits about 5.4 inches off the ground, same as the Golf that it's based on, and that's about 2 and even 3 inches less than the typical crossover, so uh, the weight mass of the vehicle is lower to the ground, and that's always a help for handling. Uh, it's much more, uh, much more uh, corner carving friendly than the typical crossover SUV, and it just stands out a little bit more as well. Um, Finally, something else that I should mention that um, is probably going to be of interest to people who are in the general crossover market and might be considering something like this is that because it is based on the Golf, 
Uh, it shares the Gulf's nice high roof line and generous headroom. It has uh, a lot of headroom and in both rows. You'll note that uh, the roof doesn't slope so sharply backward as it's become very fashionable styling in a lot of other cars that really cuts down on the available headroom, particularly in the rear seat. Uh, and as it turns out, um, this thing actually has slightly more headroom um, than the current Golf does. And I'm not exactly sure how they did that, but they did it and kudos to them. Anyway, uh, I'll have more up at epautos.com shortly. There's also a rant getting into uh, libertarians and Teslas uh, that some of you might be interested in. And I also did a quick video and an article about uh, cleaning up and uh, uh, giving a spa day treatment to one of my old uh, rat bikes, my 1983 Honda GL 650 Silverwing Interstate. Interstate, boy, that's a mouthful. Anyway, um, thanks for viewing, and we'll catch up with you again soon.